Today, we start down that rabbit hole, a new build, and it includes this car. What is it about? Let's find out. I got a request to build this car and make it into something. So that's exactly what we're going to do. And what we're making it into is the General Lee. It's a 1969 Charger 500. But the problem with this car is this is a Daytona. This is not the General Lee car. But they said they don't care. The General Lee car front end should look more like that. Right? No headlights. But they said they want to use this car for whatever reason and make a General Lee out of it. So that's exactly what we're going to do. So the first thing I gotta do is get this out of the pack and you know the routine. If you haven't, check out my how-to videos and everything. I show how to use 100% acetone to get the cars out of the packs. All right, we got the glue all broken loose and the car is free, look at that. Yes, sir. This is really a very cool casting, the flame job and everything on it. Got Dodge on the back, as you can see. I mean, this is a super cool casting, but we're gonna change out the wheels he told me what kind of wheels he wanted and everything. With this Tampo job on this, it's super cool. Dodge on the side, I mean, Hot Wheels on the side, Dodge on the back. It's just a really cool casting. And if you don't know what the General Lee is, well, maybe you shouldn't be into Hot Wheels. Just saying. <laughs> now, the General Lee is a uh, Dodge Charger out of a very popular show. People running around, having fun, dodging the law, and jumping every episode they jumped a car at least once and every episode they destroy the car at least once we're not going to destroy this and we're going to turn it into something different so let's get this bad boy drilled apart i'm not going to show you exactly how to do this you've seen me do it in videos before again if you're looking how to take a hot wheels part, a car apart check out my playlist i got a how-to video on there but what we're going to be doing is drilling out these two posts and the car should come apart so I'm going to get it drilled out and we'll be right back. That should be that. Let's check and see. Yep, look at that. Right apart. Alright. Make sure we got all the shavings off. Nice clean body. Of course, it's a brand new car straight out of the pack. So it should be in pretty good shape. I don't like the fact that we're going to be using the yellow windshield. But hey, whatever. Let's check and make sure a screw go in it. I got a feeling I'll have to go just a little bit more. All right, that should be deep enough. Let's see how much room I just do have left. Because you can go too deep. Now once you get it drilled out, and be careful with these front posts. As you can see, they're not very long. I actually recommend going in, you know, a couple rounds in with the screw. And then maybe filing the head of the screw off a little bit. Because there's not a lot of room there. And you can very easily punch through that. So just be very careful. But after you get that, the next thing you want to do is file down the ridges on the, the post so that you can put the body back on. I mean, when you do it right, it'll snap on, but we're not looking for it to snap on. We want it to go on like it was made to go on. So we're going to file it down real quick. I've actually been wanting to do one of these cars for a while. I have an idea I'm going to do me one, but it's going to be, you know how that is, a while because i got so much other stuff going on, trying to get these done, got another project going of course, you know how it is you guys that do customs, but eventually I'm going to do one, I'm not going to tell you what I'm going to do to it, it's going to be different, but it's going to be, 
it's going to be pretty pretty good if it all goes right I haven't seen anybody else do one quite like it I've seen somebody else do one similar but not exactly with all the detail work and stuff I'm going to put into it I'm just going to leave it at that but once you get that done like that to where the body will go back on it without having any issues huh? goes right back on there does it snap in place or the front one does I need to work on it just a little bit more One spot you can't get to because the body's right in the way. There we go. I got it. But once you get it where you want it, you're going to run the screws back in. See, it doesn't snap in place now. It just goes on real slick, real easy. It's exactly what we're looking for. You want to go ahead and run the screws in it you don't have to go all the way but you know just go in a pretty good ways and see i'm actually going to grind these off just a hair because i drilled on it and drilled on it. i got a good bit and it it works really good so you know it's nice and sharp and i don't want to go through it like i said you don't have a lot and if you look at that head of that screw by the time you get down deep enough you're going to punch through that hood so i'm actually going to grind down the heads of these screws but for the next step we want to go ahead and put the screws in it because we want to keep everything out of those holes that we can so here's what we got now we've got the window the body the interior and the base so the car don't look good like that as a generally so we got to get that paint off okay let's go ahead and give the generally its first maiden jump uh jump right into the old North Carolina red clay and we'll see you tomorrow if not the day after but you know how it is old generally you got to start somewhere and you just made your first jump so many more to come I'm sure so we're going to put this over to the side let it do its thing now we're going to get these wheels over here And somebody told me that you could actually heat these up with like a cigarette lighter and bend them out of the way. I haven't tried that yet. If any of you have tried it, let me know if it works. Because I wish there was a better way to do this without permanently fixing it to where it won't hold the wheels in there like it's supposed to. But, gotta do what you gotta do, I reckon. But I would like to be able to reuse it. Sometimes I can get it just right and it works, and sometimes not so much. But you guys know how it is. You gotta cut this little tab out, and then the wheels will come out eventually. <laughs> I need to get me some different types of cutters so I can cut that a little easier. There it is. I should be able to get that back in there, but I'm just going to go ahead and demolish it all the way around. Alright, there's that one. I'm going to do the same thing to the front. And they come right out. Now I'm going to put this in some super clean because we're going to paint the base the same color as the body because that's just what you're supposed to do when you paint a real car. And since we want this one to, you know, kind of resemble the car that it's going to be molded after, we want to paint the body. So we're going to put this in some super clean. This will have to paint tan, and we're changing out the wheels. Now here's the factory wheels that was on it. And what we're going to do for his, he wanted some gold wheels. So we're putting the gold wheels on there instead of the, the, the black and gold rim, uh, line. So we're going to be putting the gold rims on there. I need to fat back ones those I need one pair of small there we go there there's what we're looking for that's exactly it and then we'll save these for another adventure like I said it's not much of a difference but it is a difference as you can see that gold's gonna really look good on there with that orange paint so that's the look we're going for And the cool thing is, I really don't have to do anything but glue these in after I get the body painted. They fit perfect. 
super is in glue <laughs> so we're gonna take this put everything over to the side all right here we go now what we have here is a mixture of it super clean and water it's not quite 50 50 i mixed it probably 60 40 60 percent super clean 40 percent water so all you're gonna do is you're just gonna drop the base in let it stay in there for a while come back and check it and let it do its thing we're just gonna set that over to the side work on a video and watch it as we go whenever that's whenever that's ready we'll pull it out rinse it off with soap and water and that'll be that and we can let it dry put it back in here and get ready for the next step five minutes later let me pull it out just see how quick this stuff does work it's been in there literally five minutes and look at that it's already gone everybody I mean I can go ahead and just take it out now literally five minutes later and the process is over with I'll wipe it off for now show you look at that every bit of the chrome is gone off of there now I can prime this and paint it the same color as the body but I'm gonna put this up we're gonna go neutralize this with some soap and water and next step you'll see is the actual working on the on the body getting it ready for paint all right got the parts outside we're going to hit the bottom in the interior with some gray primer that way we can get stuff ready to be painted of course it is super windy out here why would it be anything else when i'm trying to paint But now we've got those all primed up. Let them dry. They'll be ready for paint. All right, let's see if we can find this bad boy. If this would have been premium paint, what we would have had to have done was scuff up the exterior or sandpaper or scotch bright, whatever, and let it soak for a day or two, because, or at least two days, because premium paint is so much tougher. But I bet you all of this is already off of it. So let's brush it get all the extra paint stripper back in the jar that we can waste not won't not you leave it for another day another project but look at that all gone So now all I got to do is take it in there and hit it with some warm soapy water and the rest of that should come right off. So let me get in there and I'll be right back. I will show you how it looks after. Alright, here's what we got. Just a little bit of paint left right there on the edge. Around the window. So we're going to clean that up with a brass bristle brush after we get it all cleaned up, all, all dried off. So, since this is a car for somebody else, I want it to be, you know, very good. I want it to look really good. I want the paint job to be really good. I want it to be a good job, in other words. The red is a really hard color to get off. You can see some in the wheel wells. But outside of that, the citrus strip did an amazing job. So let's hit it with the press, the brass bristle brush, and see how it comes out. Make sure to work around all the grooves and stuff. See how it gets rid of that red? Just like so. Now it's all gone. But we want to be sure to get everything. Get all the wheel wells. Make sure it's all gone. Now that we've gotten all that taken care of, I'm going to hit it with steel wool and give it a bit of a shine. Now the original General Lee didn't have these fender flares 
and didn't have all the door handles and all that crap on it. At least not the TV version. <clears throat> Depending on which show you watch, some episodes they did have the door handles but you didn't notice it. But you know how that is. But they never had the fender flares. But we're going to leave them. Like I said, this car is, I'm, I'm building it for somebody else. So we're going to do it how they want it done. So right now I'm just going to shine it up a little bit. And look how much shinier it is with just a little bit of scotch brack. Or, or steel wool rather, not scotch brack. God, what am I thinking? We could really make this bad boy shine if we wanted to hit it with some uh, sandpaper or sanding blocks, if you will. But look at that. I mean, that quick. Look how much shinier this is compared to that. Now I'm not going to polish it because it's going to be painted orange. It's also going to be primed. But I just want to make sure that I have the body in as good a shape as I can have it before I prime it and paint it. So we're going to do this, then we're going to degrease it, then we're going to prime it and paint it. Alright, look how much better that looks compared to where we started. Now by, by rights I should take a file and knock down all these lines around the windows where it's raised. And I should knock down these fender flares because like I said it generally didn't have that. But for this one, I'm going to leave it. When I do mine, I'm going to take them off. But for this project, they stay as is. So next process, degrease it, prime it, paint it. So we'll see you there. But here you can see what look we're going for. This Zamac version of it looks really, really good. I mean, look at that bad boy. How good it looks like that. Now if I polish it up just a little bit more and then clear coat it and leave it like that, oh my god, that looks so good. And I'm actually going to do a ZMAC version of this and just put the O1 on it and stuff. But for this build, like I keep saying, this is for somebody else. I can't do it just yet. But this yeah, it still rolls really good with that. But that's what we've got going on. Just wanted you to see the sneak peek. Okay, what you didn't see was I got the car all degreased and then dried off. So now we're going to give her a, a coat of primer. Looks pretty good, doesn't it? I mean, there's not a lot of spots or anything on here from the, the casting process. There's a few little spots right there, but it's no big deal. Overall, the car looks really good. I'm pleasantly surprised. Like I said, I'm going to be making a uh, Zamac version of this. So keep a lookout for that video to come later. But let me shake my primer up and we'll get this baby going. All right, here we go. You know the drill, light light dust coats to start with, just like so. And you can see this is very windy out here again today, which is par for the course in my area of the world. But you want to hit it real light like that, give it a minute or two to flash, and then come back and hit it again. I see a spot right there. Kind of looks a little rough, but ew. by the time we get it primed and painted, you'll never notice it. Got to get the inside too, dummy. Forgot to get that when I was talking to you. I just lightly missed the inside, I mean the outside of it. Anytime you do a complete color change, it's always best to go ahead and, and you could, I love this primer, but it's best to always go ahead and hit the inside. But you can actually watch this primer dry. I mean, this, this stuff, I, I really like it. It's called Magical, I mean Miracle. And in my mind, it really is a miracle because this is the only primer I've gotten that doesn't fill in the body molds, the body lines or anything like that. I see a couple of small pieces of something right there that I'll have to get out. But I'm going to let it dry for a few minutes and we'll be back. Now while I'm letting this dry, in between coats, you can see it's, I, I got those couple of pieces of trash out of it. And I'm going to hit that area again with primer because i got to coat the whole car with a wet coat. But when you do it generally, there is no correct way. Because they use like 280 different versions of the General Lee in the show, in the series. Some of them had full roll, roll cages. In other words, they went all the way up to the windshield, down the pillar, uh, up and over, and then down behind the seats. And those were the ones that they had set up for the jump scenes. Those were B cars, if you will. They really wasn't supposed to make it to the in-car footage. But 
you know it did so what can you say about it i see a few little dots right there too i'm going to take care of but anyhow some of them didn't have the roll bar in it except for the one that goes behind the seat that you see in most of the in car shots or most of the hero car shots if you will some of them did um had the back painted black matte black and if you're going to do a general lee you have to do that that's a that's a requirement you have to do around the tail lights matte black and then the very first episode had the cross flags the confederate flag and the american flag right there so we're going to be putting that on this one on mine i'm going to be doing a lot of extra goodies and stuff but i'm not going to give that away just yet the general lee though there's so many different versions of it out there there's no right there's no wrong some people say the color is hemi orange they want to be very particular about the color some people call it flame red which is a a orangish red and i forgot the exact color i'll i'll try to remember to put it in but they actually got one of the original general lees and they opened up the trunk where the paint had never been touched up and they shot it with that little gun that tells them what color it is and if i can remember i'll put the actual name in of it in here but it's none of the paint colors everybody says it is it is a completely completely different color altogether it's funny when you put primer on it you see stuff that wasn't there because you can see those scratch marks right there in the casting and i'm sorry for all the bouncing you come around here scratch marks in the same spot well, we've given this a minute or two to dry now we're going to put a wet coat on it but like i said there's no right there's no wrong generally as long as it's orange and got the zero one on the side of it with the confederate flag on top you've got a generally that's pretty much all you can say about that but we've got this bad boy coated i'll take care of that i'll sand that out real lightly and then we'll hit this bed boy with some paint. All right, so today is going to be the day. It's windy, but we're going to get this joker paint. I got my orange paint, got my dinner, trade just to haul stuff out on the front porch, but we're going to do this today, so let's get to it. So first thing I need to do is, of course, mix up the paint. Got to shake it up really good. Got me a little bottle to mix everything up in. Now, does it take a lot to do one of these cars? It really doesn't. You can see how thick that paint is, so probably about that much. And by the time we thin it, and I normally thin pat my paint like this 50 50. This is acrylic paint, but it's all purpose. So you can see that's a little under 50 50. That's pretty close. So now we just put the cap back on it. Shake it up really good, get it nice and thin. Then we'll check and see how it looks and then we'll get to it. Now acrylic paint scratch really easy. It come off really easy. But once you put a clear coat on it, it's it's hard as a rock. It's pretty hard to mess it up. But this thing is about half full. You can't tell it now because you know it's all over the side of the glass. But we're just going to mix it up with the thinner really good. And make sure it's nice and thin. And then we'll just spray the devil out of it. We'll start with the interior, right? on the body and go from there I'm gonna start with the base though overall we're gonna do that first and then do the body so I'm just gonna have this on this holder like this and then I'm just gonna spray it that way I can turn it and everything get all the angles and then I don't know if I have everything set just right for the base but as you can see I've got everything primed shake this up again and we're gonna put it in our cup on the airbrush And that's still just a little bit thick. So I may need to thin that down a little bit more. We'll see how it sprays out. All right, so let's start. See how it goes. Not looking to coat the whole thing all at once. We're just looking to get a base coat on it. That's all we're looking for. Here 
we say we're not looking to coat the whole thing at one time. We're just looking to get the body color on there. Then we can come back with another coat, a wet coat. But I, uh, I normally paint the bases of my cars to mount, the, to match the bodies because I mean, if you're going to look at a real car, the real car has the base of the car matches the top of the car. So that's why I do mine that way. Not everybody does it, but I do. And you don't have to. I mean, it's just personal preference. Just one of the things I do. Now there's the base. I think that's all I'm going to put on now. Now let's do the top. The body. We're going to start with the insides, some light coats, and then come back and hit it just like we did that with a wet coat. Hopefully, hopefully you can see that going on. Acrylic paints are pretty hard to get to run, but still, you want to use the same common practice with all your paints. Whatever you do with one paint, do with all paints. Now we're going to do the outside of it. Again, light coats. And you will see this start to transform into the car you're looking for. So we're going to let that sit here for just a second. I'm going to cover it up. Keep dust out of it. Let that coat dry. And then we'll come back and put another coat on. I'm going to just put on a second wet coat of that. And you can see how good that's looking. It's starting to flash and dry. Now we're going to hit the body again. Now we can hit it with a much more wet liberal coat than what we started with. Make sure you're in the fender wells and everything. Starting to look like a General Lee now, ain't it? <laughs> we'll let that sit in there for just a few more minutes of flash dry. You can use air, but I just like letting it do, do it naturally. And come back in just a minute and we'll put another coat on until we get the color we're looking for. That's the point. You, you add a little bit at a time until you get what you're looking for. And the main reason I use the airbrush, it just gives a better overall flat result so there's not as much sanding. Yes, yeah, spray cans work great and everything, and there's nothing wrong with them. I used to use that for years on my plastic models and stuff as I was growing up. But you, it's really hard to beat the finish of an airbrush. The only problem with airbrushing is you got the cleanup, you know. But if you're using acrylic paints, it's not that bad. A little bit of warm water in a, in a big container like this right here 
and I'll show you how easy it is to clean up here in a few minutes. But you can see how much paint I still have left right there, and the cup on the airbrush is still half full. So we got plenty of paint. It does not take much to do a model car at all, or diecast car. All right, it's pretty much dry now. I'm ready for the second wet coat. Everything's looking pretty smooth, pretty flat. There's no orange peel. It's a little wet there, so I want to be really careful. Matter of fact, I'm gonna hit that with some air out of the gun. Help dry it. Hey, now it's all dry. But you can see how flat looking the paint out of an airbrush looks. There's no orange peel or anything. So let's give it this next wet coat. Again, I'm gonna hit the inside first. One of the hardest things for me to learn with an airbrush is you need to keep the air on, so you need to keep that pushed. And that helps keep the tip cleaned out. And then of course, how far to stay away. The further away you get from your project, the wider the spray pattern, the better the spray pattern. But with it being windy as it is, you can see on the reflection and everything, you see limbs and I mean leaves and stuff, the reflection's blowing. So I'm actually wasting a lot of paint doing this out here, but that's okay. Try not to block y'all. Look how good that looks. No orange peel at all. Man. Trying to get a good coat on there. But look how good that looks. It is just so hard to beat an airbrush. It's just I wish they were quicker to clean up, not so troublesome, you know? And while we cover it up and let it dry, that keeps dust and stuff out of it and pollen. We're going to clean up. And a cleanup is really simple. Just take the top off, drop it in the water, right? Put any extra paint you have back in your bottle because you may want it for something else and label it. And these jars that I'm using, these little vials, are really really cool They're actually glass so acrylic paint and stuff won't stick to it you can actually clean them out if this was plastic you'd never get the color out of it but this is actually a glass bottle well now we gotta get all that paint out of there so first thing I'm gonna do is wipe it off the outside because we don't like messes and I'm gonna move this so I don't accidentally knock it over put it over there out of the way That over there out of the way bring our water over and we're just going to submerge the cup right right about there and just blow water through it so what that's doing is that's cleaning out the needle 
Mm. In. You want to get some in and do what's called a back flush. Now with automotive paints and stuff, you might not want to do the back flush, but with acrylics you can. You just put your finger over the tip, all right, and make a bubble up in there. See how it's bubbling? And that's getting, that's just working it all out of the cup. See, we're getting there, but not quite yet. Now, if you look down in there, there's actually still some down in there. So what we're going to do is we're going to disassemble it. And this is super easy. On this particular model, you just take out the back, which is really a stop for the needle slide. And you're going to take off the cover, all right? Then you're going to open, undo that, and then pull out the needle. As you can see, it's dirty. So, of course, you want to wipe that off. And now you can look down in there and see the paint and everything. So what we want to do is don't dunk the whole thing in there. We're just going to get a little bit of water in it, work it back and forth, right? And most of it's actually gone now. But we just do that a couple times. As you can see, more and more and more of it comes out. And then you can take a Q-tip and get down in there. Or you can take your paper towel and wad it up like a Q-tip, right? And put it down in there and work it back and forth. And then just rinse the cup out like so. And as you can see, that is very, very clean. Now, once a month, I strongly recommend if you do a lot of painting, once a month, take this joker apart completely, take the cup off, take the front off, take the needle tip out, because there's actually a tip under here See, that's where your needle comes out, right there. When you pull it back, what happens is that lets the air go by the needle and it comes out. You actually need to remove that and clean that out as well because paint will get in there and stop it up. But that's really all there is to get one of these. And then when you put it back together, be very careful because you don't want to bend the tip on this. You just push it all the way in until it stops. All right. You just push it in until it stops and it will stick out that hole. See it coming out of the hole? You just push it in until it stops and keep just a little bit of pressure on it while you put the back back on. What I normally do is I, I'll take that, stick it on, right? Just get it started to where it starts tightening down and I'll back it off and I'll work the needle back and forth until it's in. And then you want to keep just very, very light pressure on it while you finish tightening it down. Because if you don't, what will happen is when you push down in the air, it will actually allow paint to flow by because what that's doing is it's stopping the flow of the paint coming out. But you can see the tip sticking out there and you can see it as I work it back and forth. That's what controls the flow of the paint. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to run some more water through it just to verify that I got it all out and then I'm going to take it back apart wipe it down one more time and we'll be done no need to back flush or anything we're just going to spray it all out and you can see the water coming out look at that good flow and you can see that that's good flow coming out of that bad boy so I'm not going to be doing anything to the base because really there's nothing to detail on this base anyway except for the, the um, oil pan and transmission bell housing and maybe the rear end but he doesn't want that done anyway so for now all I'm going to do is clear coat this to seal in that orange so it doesn't come off and I'm also going to clear coat this so that I can put the decals on because with flat acrylic paint it's not very slippery for the decals to slide around on. So I'm gonna hit it with a coat of clear and then we'll do all the touch up details and all that stuff, whatever we're gonna do to it. But let's get busy clear cutting this. All right, so I'm just gonna hit the base with the clear. And the reason I'm starting with the base is so if we have any issues at that time, we can take care of it. Looks like that clear is gonna work pretty good with that color. We'll know more as we dry it 
or as it dries. So I'm gonna set it down and hit this corner and then we'll do the body. All right, here we go, wish me luck. I'm gonna hit the inside first. Just like we painted it. That way I can be sure to get the wheel wells and everything. And you can just see this color start to come to life as I hit it with that clear. Watch this. Look at that. Oh man, yeah. Inside, the back. And we're not looking to, to coat the whole thing the first spray. All we're doing is looking to put on a tack coat. We'll give this just a couple minutes to flash, then we'll come back and hit it with a wet coat. Then we'll put the decals on it. Then we'll hit it with the finish coat. Five minutes later. All right, we're giving it a few minutes to tack. Now let's hit it with a good coat. Really not the best day to be doing this out here in the wind, but we have to do what we have to do. But that's that's very good for a coat to add the decals to. So now what we're going to do is we're going to put this inside, let it dry for a day or two, then we'll put the decals on it, and then hit it with the clear. Now I still have to do the interior, which as you all know, on a generally is tan. Now any color tan will work. I mean, there's no right or wrong with these cars like I told you before. There's so many different color variations because they use so many different cars for so many different scenes and everything. So we're just going to hit this with a tan. Let me put something right there to keep that from blowing. So now what we're going to do is prime the paint. Yep, it's working. And then we're just going to hit it from up kind of high from one end to the other. And this is really the wrong weather. As you can see, the wind's blowing, but I don't have a paint boost, so we gotta work with what we got. And as all of you already know, this is being primed, so we'll let that sit for just a minute and put another coat on. All right, now we need to get it from a different angle because you can see right there, there's a little bit of gray. We need to get that whole side, so. Typically, if you hit a car from all four sides, you will get everything that needs to be painted. And that should be good enough right there. Clear out your air nozzle. And that's enough. Now we take this inside, cover it up, let it dry. Alright, tonight we near the end. We've got the car painted, we've got a clear coat on it. Right? Now we need decals. And these are the TV version decals. These are not the the other decals you see everywhere, these are the actual TV version decals. And we've got to put the interior in, which is as you can see is just a tan color. We've got to put the wheels on the base. And we have got to assemble it. So what we're going to strive for tonight is get the wheels on the base, get the decals on the car, give the car at least a day if not longer to dry that way we can clear coat the whole thing and be finished with it so we're going to try to get decals on that and the wheels on the base tonight so let's get to it all right got to open up a new bottle of super glue because the other one is done finished right up so let's get this bad boy open and get everything ready I like using the gel because the gel doesn't run whenever you're doing anything. So whenever you're messing with tires and wheels, you don't end up gluing the, the wheels to the axles. Now this is going to be pretty straightforward. These wheels actually came off a car that's the same width and everything. So they're just basically going to go right in the same spot as the ones that came off of it. Hey, look at that. How lucky can you get? So I'm going to get something to prop it up and we're going to glue these bad boys in. Now the mother-in-law had some glitter paint, I don't know why, but anyhow she decided to ask the wife if I wanted it, and I'll find some use for it, if nothing else, the containers, right? But that's what's going to hold our car up while we glue it together, just like that. So let me take these back out, take these back out, get my Insta set. Now you don't want to put a lot of glue on it, because if you do, you want to be directly in the middle because if you if you put a lot and you screw up the base and the interior will not go together it will actually hit on that so be very very careful when you do this 
and pay attention to where you're putting your glue. And again, we just want to make sure they're in the middle. And we're going to put a dab through the middle, like so. Front and back. And we're going to hit it with the Insta Set, a drop of Insta Set. Sorry, I'm shaking, but I've been outside working today and my hands are just jerking from that. But that will take care of the base. Now, I'm still going to do something to the base. I'm actually going to paint the grill black and the headlights chrome and maybe touch up the turn signals too. And I'm definitely going to paint the rear markers red. So we'll do that here in just a few minutes. Let's get the decals taken care of. Now, of course, you know, this is going to go on the top. You got the other one for the sides. But I'm also going to put the cross flags, the Finnish flag and the Confederate flag on the back because that's what they generally had on it. And then I will probably put the tag uh, license plate on there too. We'll have to see about that. But like I said, these are replicas of the ones that was actually on the show. That's why it's outlined in white and all that good stuff. So that's, that's the reason I wanted these. I've got another set. I plan on using them for a custom for me, but I've got somebody else that's wanting a custom. So I may end up using that and just order them in another set. We'll have to see how that goes. But I've got me some water. You gotta have lukewarm water to dip them in, right? And I'm going to be trying something I hadn't tried before, Micro Set and Micro Saw. Micro Set, you put on first, that's supposed to allow a little bit of lubricity and give the decal better bonding to the car. And Micro Saw is supposed to make the, the clear part around the decals and in the grooves and stuff, make it just want to conform to those grooves. And almost, for lack of better terms, make it look like it's painted on. So. I've never used this before, we're going to try it. Now when you do decals, and it's been a long time since I did decals, I recommend cutting wide to start with. All right? I cut kind of close at the top as you can see, but I'm going to, I cut wide at the bottom and we'll go back and trim it up. It's, it's like doing carpentry work, you cut on the long side because you can always go back and take some off but you cannot go back and add some like if I was to cut off some of the white surrounding these numbers I wouldn't be able to go back and add it so we want to cut close but not so close we have to worry about it now I have it pulled up on the computer so I can reference pictures and stuff it really doesn't matter where they go. They just have to go past the door handle, right? Somewhere like right in there. But wherever you put it, you want it to line up the same every time. And of course, on the picture, that body line right there. This body line, the decal always goes below it. So that's what we're shooting for. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to line it up with the bottom of the door groove and stay just halfway between the door handle and those uh, indentions and that's where that's going to go you guys have no idea how nervous I am about this because it has been decades since I applied any decals of any kind <laughs> I mean it's been decades this will be my first set in probably 20 years or so probably 30 I mean it's been a minute I kid you not so I'm very nervous. I hope this comes out okay. What's that? I'm pretty sure it will, man. If I screw it up, I've got another set. But I hope I don't screw it up because I don't like wasting. So we're going to give it the best shot we got. And of course, you guys know where this goes. This goes right here.
but it's a little bit wider than the core is. Hmm, I don't like that. It sure is. It's wider than the core is. So the letters are actually going to be rolled over on the door. On the sides. I don't like that. We're going to go with it and see how it looks, but I sure don't like it. Kind of bummed about these decals being a little too big for the General Lee, man. Like I said, we're going to put this crossed flag on there. And where it goes, and I'll put a, a screenshot of it in there, it goes right here. And you can see it in the one of the, the episodes where the boy's shooting flies in the back window. And that's exactly where this decal goes. Right at the base, dang it. Right at the base of the back window. I'm just using an old paintbrush, old cheap paintbrush anyway, just to put some of this on here. All you got to do is just wet the car down. That's all you're doing is just wetting it. it smells like vinegar. Then you take the decal, keep it between your fingers, put it in the warm lukewarm, lukewarm water for a few seconds and every so often check it because you don't you want it to be in there long enough to where it separates but you don't want it to be in there so long that the adhesive washes off the back of the decal so normally five to ten seconds sometimes you gotta go 20 or longer just every so often check it and this one it's been about 10 seconds and this one is already ready to come off Then we can move the decal around and get it just where we want it. And then once you get it to where you want it, you want to take a Q-tip, try to dab the excess stuff out of the back of it. That's all you're looking to do. You're just looking to dab it out. Well, there's that. Now we're going to give that just a few minutes to dry. And if you use this type of stuff, don't worry, because what it's going to do, it makes that bubble up. And then as it dries, it pulls like a vacuum down into all the creases and the body lines and stuff. So when you use this stuff, don't be scared that, you know, oh, my decal's bubbling up. No, put it under something, let it set for a day, and then come back and check it. Leave it alone. Don't touch it after. I clear coated decide that I clear coated my car and the reason I clear coated my car is on a matte finish the decals will not want to slide around so I put a real light clear coat on there and I know there's a spot right there I'll touch that up that's no big deal but um if you don't clear coat it the car the decals will not want to slide around so let's get the O1 on there all right, we'll put the micro set on there first. And since I knew it took about 10 seconds, I can sit here and stick it in and count. 1,001, 1,002, you get the message. <laughs> there we go. She's ready to slide on. Get it just the way I want it. Hold it down. And then try to get out any excess excess moisture, right? But she's starting to look like a general rule of E now, isn't it? Look at that bad boy, yes sir. Now we're gonna tackle this thing. <sighs> so let's try her. I don't know how this is gonna work with that decal being as big as it is, but we're gonna try to make it work. Just brush on liberally. The micro set. Then take the decal and put it in. Ten seconds later we'll be ready to go. Alright, like I said, I don't know how this is gonna look, but we're gonna try it. Oh, right, it's gonna work out just fine. Yeah. That'll be just fine. Once we get it where we want it, we're going to take out the excess. Just like before, this helps remove any and all air bubbles. 
And it shows you where you have jagged edges that you should have took taken care of. <laughs> now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to set this over to the side. I'm going to give it about 10 minutes to kind of dry just a hair. Then I'm going to come back and put this on it. They say that I don't have to, but I'm going to. Just, just from watching everybody else, they do it. So if they do it, then I'm going to do it because I've never done this before. So right now what we want to do is put the generally license plate right there. So again, we're going to take the micro set. And I actually numbered mine so I don't get it confused. Because micro set, micro saw, it's kind of a weird name. Micro set, you would think you use that to set the, the decal on. But no, nah, that's not the way this works, ladies and gentlemen. So, I've got that on now. Now I'm going to take the very, 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 very small decal. Put it between my fingers. I know, tweezers, tweezers, tweezers. But I've seen too many decals get torn up by tweezers. And then lightly press that bad boy down. Cause I do not want that thing moving. All right, get our paints ready. While that dries just a few more minutes, we're gonna work on some details. Get us a paper towel, toothpick for painting. Get two out just in case. A rag for my grubby biscuit grabbers. Okay, move these so I don't mess them up because I need them for the next one. Now, I want to do, yeah, that's looking good. That's on good and straight. I'm going to try to do the red inside of there. All right, we've got the back taken care of. We've got the license plate on there. We've got the wheels on it that he wanted on it. We've got the front end done. The black is still drying just a hair, so that's good. Rolls like brand new. That. So now I'm going to set that over there with that. Let all that dry overnight. Come back and take a look at this. And I am very, very pleased with how this looks. But I just want to use some of the micro saw on the very top. I'm not going to mess with anything else, I don't think. I may. I don't know. We'll see how it goes. Yeah, let's just do it. We're going to do one. Let's do it all. And this stuff smells just like vinegar. I don't know what it is about it. Man, it smells just like vinegar. Again, with this stuff, what you're supposed to do is you're supposed to just brush it on. Leave it alone. And as it dries, it will conform everything and pull everything in. I mean, you can take a Q-tip and, and once it starts working, see how I just made it fold over that body line? You can work it in with the Q-tip and everything. You know, like if you got a crease right there, you can roll it and work it into that body line if it was going over that body line. But none of mine are going over body lines except for that top. But I just wanted to add it because if I'm going to do it to part of it, I might as well do it to all of it, right? Well, what we're going to do now, we are going to take it, or we're going to set it back here, and we're going to take the cover and put over it. And that will sit there till tomorrow night. Same time, same bat channel. We'll see you then. Alright, got this all clear coated. All I did was put a piece of tape around the wheel so it wouldn't get on them. But I went ahead and re clear coated the base because I wanted to lock in the paints that I put on there. Front end looks really good. The rear end looks really good. Got that decal on there. The license plate for the General Lee. So we've got that. We 
we've got the interior which has been painted tan right still not happy with the yellow glass but oh well we're gonna roll with it because we're finishing this thing up right here right now and here's what we've all been waiting for take the cover off of it ta-da there we go look at that bad boy it is not perfectly slick but most of that is in the casting itself like I said and uh, I wasn't going to spend a lot of time on it. He just wanted it painted, wanted the decals put on it, the wheels changed, you know, make it look like a General Lee. So that's exactly what we did. I got the General Lee decal on the top. And I know I was whining a little bit about the decal, and I still wish that it was over just a little bit. But after looking at all everybody else's cars that do the General Lee's, they have the same issue. Some people actually trim the white off of the, the Confederate flag to get the General Lee name to fit up on there a little bit better, but I'm not going to do that. I'm I'm okay with the way it's going to turn out. When I do mine, I'm actually going to file that body line off for the door. I'm going to file it off and make it all nice and smooth. But she turned out really good. I mean, really good. The camera does not do this bad boy justice. Got the little cross flag there. Now, mine, I'm going to have some different things on them. I'm even going to have the CB antenna on the back. I might even make it removable. So we'll have to see about that. But let's get this bad boy put together, shall we? All right. I have washed my hands. I have dried my hands. I just don't, I don't like using gloves because it's so hard. You know, some of this stuff is so small and I already have enough trouble with dexterity and stuff like it is. So we're going to take the car off of the helping hands very gently. Now we're going to take the screws out. Now we're going to put the windshield back in it. Slide it up to where it needs to be. Put the interior back in it. Put the base on it. And this is where the magic happens. When I flip this bad boy over, I bring to you the Dukes of Hazard generally. All right, here we go, getting ready for the reveal. The glamour shots, if you will. For those that don't remember what we started with, 1969 Dodge Charger 500 from the Hot Wheels Flame set. Now this technically is not the correct one because it has the revealed headlights. But unless you know your Dodges really, really good, you're not going to know the difference. And this person really didn't care anyway, so. But here's what we ended up with. I hope you enjoy. We started off by taking the car apart, stripping the chrome off the base. We stripped the paint off of the body. We painted the base and the body to match. We painted the interior tan. We changed out the wheels. And we added the very, very famous and recognizable Dukes of Hazard 01 General Lee numbers on the side. The General Lee tempo on the top with the flag. And we added the cross flags on the back of the car, which is only in one episode of the Duke's Hazard. That's right, it only appeared in one episode. What you doing, son? Squirting flies. <laughs> man time sure must have been different back then but anyhow i hope you enjoyed this video maybe you learned a thing or two that's my goal with these videos is to try to help teach you know newcomers to the hobby on how to do this and like i said i just hope you really enjoyed the video until next time thank you all so very much for watching god bless and we'll see you in the next video thank you